Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 9, representing proportional relationships with equations. So classwork example 1 is called Jackson's Birdhouses. Jackson and his grandfather constructed a model for a birdhouse. Many of their neighbors offered to buy the birdhouses. Jackson decided that building birdhouses could help him earn money for his summer camp, but he is not sure how long it will take him to finish all the requests for the birdhouse. If Jackson can build seven birdhouses in five hours, that'd be seven per five hours. Per means to divide. Write an equation that would allow Jackson to calculate the time it will take him to build any given number of birdhouses. So we're talking about time and number of birdhouses. Assume that work he works at a constant rate, and our constant rate is the seven birdhouses in five hours. Write an equation that you could find, use to find out how long it will take him to build any number of birdhouses. Okay, so our equation that we're going to be dealing with is y equals kx. We've been working with this now for a little bit. And y is the dependent variable. k is our constant rate or rate or constant of proportionality. And x is the independent variable. So when we are doing a table of values before we were doing x comma y, x is our independent variable and y is our dependent variable. So it depends on how many birdhouses he makes, how long it takes, or does it depend on how long he works, how many birdhouses he gets? That is the question. Okay, so in this situation we want to determine which is independent and which is dependent. Um, and in this case, the number of birdhouses you make <clears throat> would be the independent and the length of time is dependent. So it depends on how many birdhouses you make, how much time you spend. So in this case, this is backwards. If Jackson can build seven birdhouses in five hours, seven birdhouses per every five hours, we would want to think about how to represent this in a dependent independent format. So if I put five here and seven here, which is what this is saying, y over x, that is saying five hours, hours is independent. And that's just not the way I would want to do this. Hours would be our dependent variable and number of birdhouses is independent. It depends how many birdhouses we make, how long it's going to take us, since it's a constant. So I would rather take this and flip it over and call it 5 sevenths. So x is 7 and y is 5. So in that situation, if we have y equals k, y equals, not y equals, k equals y over x, then we have 5 divided by 7. So our equation now is going to be, now we, want to, we don't want to use y's and x's now. We want to adapt to the context of the problem. And we're talking hours and we're talking birdhouses. So we're going to determine how many hours it's going to take. And our birdhouses is 5, comma, five to the 7. And then hours and we're going to use the variable b instead of x. So 5 sevenths times b equals how many hours it's going to take to make that number of birdhouses. Okay, and the reason I did it this way is I am thinking along the lines of time being independent in this case, but could we do it the other way? I'm not trying to confuse, but could we do x, y, where x is still independent and y is dependent? Could we switch those fives and sevens like so? And then in this case, it would be 
what I wrote before here, the five, the seven over five. So I'm not saying five seven seven fifths is wrong, but if we did that seven fifths, then we'd have to rearrange this equation. So if I said y over x is seven fifths, so now I have an equal seven fifths times something like I do here, what would have to get switched there is it's the number of birdhouses divided by hours per hours. Like, so he can make seven birdhouses per five hours. Then my H would be here and my B would be here. Okay, so the next question says, so we could use either one of these. I will put a box around them because we are going to use one of them, one or both of them possibly, in the next questions. So it says, how many birdhouses can Jackson build in 40 hours? So if I use this equation, then it's already saying how many birdhouses with our constant rate and then plugging in 40 for my hours. And if I set it up this way, then I can simply cancel 5 goes into 40 8 times and the number of birdhouses is 7 times 8, which is 56. So then you could say, well, he can build 56 birdhouses in 40 hours. Okay, C says, how long will it take Jackson to build 35 birdhouses? Use the equation from part A to solve the problem. I can use either equation to solve this. One is just easier to use. So the way I look at this, it says, how long? Well, that's time, that's hours. So if I use this green equation instead of this blue one, it's gonna be more direct. So I would say H equals five sevenths, not the seven fifths, five sevenths, and then multiply that by 35 over one, because that's my B, I'm replacing the B. So my original equation was, let me move all this down here, I should write the original, H equals five over seven B. And then when I do this, seven will go into 35 five times, and five times five is 25. So you could say, it will take him 25 hours to build 35 birdhouses. Okay, D says, how long will it take to build? So again, how long, that's time. It doesn't say how many birdhouses, how long. So I'm gonna do this equation again, time equals five over seven B. How long will it take to build 71 birdhouses? H equals five over seven times, replace B with 71. And I'm gonna do it as a fraction. Seven will not go into 71. So I'm just gonna multiply five times one is five. 7 times 5 is 35, and then the denominator, 7 times 1 is 7. And this is going to be an approximation. 7 goes into 35 5 times, and 7 will not go into 5, and but 7 will go into 50 7 times with remainder of 1. So it's approximately 50.7 birdhouses. So... I will write that out for you, okay? So it will take him 50.7 hours to build 71 birdhouses. And in class, I brought up a topic. I enhanced this. I went a little one step further. And what is 0.7 hours? Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour. And if I multiply that by 7, 0.7, that is 42. So 0.7 hours would be 42 minutes. Okay, you might be asked a question like that on a SAT or something like that. They want you to convert to minutes. 
Okay, example two, Owl's Produce Stand. Owl's Produce Stand sells six ears of corn for $1.50, so they gave us that right here. Six ears, $1.50. Barbara's Produce Stand sells 13 ears of corn for $3.12, and they put that in her table over here. Write two equations, one for each produce stand, that models the relationship between the number of ears of corn sold, ears of corn, and cost. Okay, so if we have y equals kx, first of all, we need to find that k, which is y divided by x, and this would be my x and this would be my y, but we're going to call it e and c. So instead of y, we're going to put c equals, and if I take a $1.50, so let me do this down here, so c equals k times e for ears. So c equals ke is what I'm going to use for an equation on both of these. So if I write C equals KE here, and then come over here and write C equals K times E here, then we need to take, find out what K is. So K equals Y divided by X, and in this case, it's $1.50 divided by 6, and 6 goes into 15 two times, but there's a decimal there, so there's a decimal here. 6 times 2 is 12, a remainder of 3, 6 goes into 35 times. So my K is 25 cents, so C equals 0.25E. There's my equation for Al. Now if I come over to Barbara's stand and I do the same thing, K equals Y over X, which equals $3.12 divided by 13, that comes out to be 0.24. Okay, so my equation for her is going to be C equals 0.24E. So just doing these equations, this one here and this one here, we see that Barbara's stand is cheaper. You can buy one, you can buy an ear of corn for one penny less. Okay, so now we're going to come back up here. And now that we know this, we have to fill in this, these values to solve. So 6 times 2 is not 14, so I can't just simply multiply $1.50 times 2 to get my next value. So in this situation, I'm going to need to plug in this x to the equation to get my y, which is c. So c equals 0.25, and how many ears? 14. So c equals 25 cents times 14 is How much? 14 quarters. 10 quarters is 250. Four more quarters would be 350. $3.50. cents. Okay, so this is going to be $3.50. cents. And then we're going to do it again for 21. C equals 0.25 times 21. And C equals, let's just do this off on the side, 25 times 21, 5, 2, 0, 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and add. And it's going to come out to be $5.25. So that's going to be 21 years. Okay, so now if I use, I can still use my equation for this one. So instead of writing C equals, I'm using this equation again. I know C, $50 equals 0.25E. I want to solve for E, I divide by 0.25 on both sides. Divide by 0.25 and these cancel and I get E equals and that will be 200. So I can buy 200 ears of corn for $50. I'm going to do the same over here for Barbara and I'm going to use this equation to find out how many 14 ears cost. So C equals 0.24 times 14 and C equals 0.24 times 14, I'm doing on my calculator, 3.36, $3.36. Do the same equation, C equals 
0.24 times 21. And C equals $5.04. So this is going to be 504. And now I know my cost. So instead of writing C equals KE, I'm going to put the C in. 49.92 equals my K, which was 0.24, times the number of years, which is what we're trying to find. Divide both sides by 0.24, and I cancel this, and I get E equals, and 49.92 divided by 24 is 208. Okay, so then use each equation to help complete the table below, so there you go. That is the end of Lesson 9. Read the lesson summary and go do your problem set.